Let's take a quick peek at how the skeleton grid system works. So first order business obviously is to download the uh, skeleton framework, uh, not the PSD file, but just the actual, uh, in, in my case it's 1.2 from GitHub. I did that right here and I get a zip file. So I double click on it, I should have, um, well, all the files I need to get started. So let's take a peek at what we got from here. Um, now first, just in these, these three items that I have is one, the images, these are all the favicon images. So that's what's showing up um, either in your browser or your iOS device, because that's what they're, uh, what Apple wants is these specifically named ping files. Um, all the important style sheets are in here, base, layout, and skeleton, and then in index.html, fortunately, we have everything um, pretty much constructed for us. We just have to fill it in with content. So uh, I got our doc type declaration, HTML5. That's good. We got the language set. We have all this IE uh, uh, conditional statements in there. So great. Um, okay, meta. Let's see. My title. I'm going to just, so I'm just going to copy and paste some of this stuff really quickly. Uh, my title, I could take care of that right here. Um, so you have the description and the author. Obviously, you put down whatever. Let's see. YouTube video rehash. And, uh, and for content, that's me. I am the author. So very good. Uh, next line down, we have the uh, good old viewport declaration, which is saying that um, whatever your viewport size is, uh, make the initial scale of it one, which is 100%, make the maximum scale one, which is 100%. And that means that your visitors, when they look at it from something like a uh, iOS device, let's say like an iPhone at that dimension, they're not going to be able to pinch it and zoom in, right? Because that's sort of defeating the purpose of our uh, responsive layout. Uh, okay, so right below that, we have all our links to the style sheets, and it's important that um, if you want to rewrite this yourself, I don't know why you do that, but um, if you're ambitious, um, you want to make sure that the style sheets are linked in this specific order. Uh, Base.css, that's the CSS file that resets all the stuff, right? It gives you a CSS reset uh, to make sure it's cross-browser consistent. We have skeleton.css, which is actually the, the grid framework that our layout's going to be based on. And then layout.css, which is actually the file that we'll be editing. Because uh, if you look over at uh, layout.css, there really isn't any CSS in there except um, basically the skeleton of what we're going to fill in. You have all these uh, media at queries that are going to, at the different dimensions that skeleton works at, and then it basically put some code comments in here for us so we could uh, um, organize our CSS uh, nicely. And of course, uh, actually this is pretty cool too for the, app, uh, the font face declaration. It's given us the proper syntax on how to use it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but currently, obviously, it's all commented out, so it's not really affecting us in any way. So um, let's see. Wait. Before we even get down to the body, we have uh, our fav icon stuff. We have uh, the fav.ioc, our ICO, which is um, what you're going to see in a browser. And then these other three links are for uh, iOS essentially. We have icons at different sizes so that they see it in, in their browser, Safari, mobile Safari, and then if they want to bookmark it and put it on their uh, on their desktop, it'll appear just like that. So that's all the stuff that's in the photo library. Okay, so below we have all of the uh, some preset content in the body and actually why don't we take a peek at what it looks like and before we even do anything let's see if what clues we could find on using skeleton just based on what we see so first order business we know that um, this grid system is based on uh, 960 pixel width and 16 columns wide right so if you put something that's 16 columns it should stretch the entire span of that uh, 960 pixels, right? So I'm using um, 
Firebug to do this. By the way, if you have Firebug installed on um, Firefox and you go to Tools, uh, Web, De uh, where is it? Web Developer and Inspect. I just do the quick shortcut with the Option Command I. Um, you get into this view where it's really useful. You get right in there, and then see you could kind of figure out exactly what you're looking at. And even if you can't get there exactly, like I'll just click there. Down here, you could kind of go up parent containers and see what's up. So, uh, anyhow. This guy up top that spans everything is, let's see what the classes are. It says 16 columns. Exactly, right? So that this whole guy over here is um, six, the, the, spans the entire column length, which is 16. And it's cool because you could, you know, you got 15, 14, you, you got it all the way down. I guess you, you, you get what I'm saying over here. Uh, but the other thing, too, is that besides having the 16 columns, it also has this business, the one-third. I think it has like two-thirds and two-thirds as well. But that's why um, we have three different divs going over here. I'm sorry, let's let's talk skeleton talk. We have three different columns. Those are uh, thirds. Now, check this out. If I just go and change, instead of one-third, how about if I go half of, uh, half of 16 is 8. I'll go 8 here, and I'll put another one, the second one, 8 here. And then I'll do another one down here. Let's, uh, let me just copy and paste 16. Uh, eh, not quite what I, <laughs> not quite what I expected, but I have a feeling I may have done something wonky over here. Uh, oh, and this, you know, and this video was going so good. Um, eight col. Oh, I see. See, you know, the devil is in the details with these things. Because, look, I changed it from one-third column, and it's supposed to be columns when you do it the other way. So if you're going to use that one-third business, just watch out. So now I assume – there we go. Um, so now you see that this guy is 16. This guy is an eight-column. Eight column, and the one down here is a 16 column. Okay, I, I think – you're starting to get the idea of how these grid systems work. Now, if you want a little more insight on exactly what all the different ones are, I mean, your answers are right there in skeleton.css. Just take a peek. Now, remember, don't let this confuse you. Um, it's dot container dot one dot column. So that means that, um, well, for one, everything has to be inside a container class and we know that here the parent container that I have uh, that I didn't even edit is called the, the main div class that's wrapping everything is div class container okay and to be clear later in in, in this, this series of videos I'm going to change these generic divs to things that, that are going to be a little more specific like you know this top thing is not going to be a div it's going to be a header and these little um, these other little guys that I have over here are going to be articles because that's semantically correct but we could change that and anyway um, back to skeleton.css you'll see all of the options you have everything needs to be inside the container class and it needs to have the both of these classes it needs to have one and column or one and columns now you see uh, how it changes a little bit semantically but it's the same thing um, anyway Oh, and you have another thing worth mentioning are the offsets because if you do if you offset it by one, it's going to push it over to the right a little bit. Now check this out. So how is offset going to work? Well, let's say that I didn't want this docs and support to span all 16. Say I just want it to span 15 or 14. Let's let's say. Uh, Let's go with 14. So we'll say the very last one. We'll say 14, right? And now it just it basically uh, stops it to the right over there. But you see, so it's sort of left aligned, if you will. But if I offset it by one, well, if actually if I offset it by one, it's going to end up being perfectly centered. But if I offset it by two, it's going to be to the right. And all I need to do to do that is use just this 
offset by one and I'll just add that class now in case you forgot you know classes are just added with no extra spaces doesn't matter what order you put them in over there and don't put that dot in and let's see what that looks like ah now that container is centered let's see there we go now it's still pushing to the left over here but the point is is that dock is actually falling here is one one column spacing and we have that same column spacing at the end check it out let's see we put this guy over here and then we could verify that it's sort of like that by putting it over there as well right if we go up it's kinda right there 